Hello everyone, Pally Time here. I just played a game with uh, Asmodan. I was trying to record a video and I noticed my friendly team was doing ridiculous things. They were level, I believe, these numbers are just off the top of my head, uh, 22, 4, 29, and like 6. Like, why? Why? Why are you doing this to me, Blizzard? So we're going to do Hero League. We're going to play the same characters over and over again because I want good games. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves in the Sky Temple. This this Zeratul was first pick on our team, and he didn't actually pick a character, and he was just given Zeratul. And now he's not moving. We also don't have a tank on our team, so this should be interesting. I'll solo bot. That's the best thing for me to do in this particular situation. Double AFK all the way across the sky. Then this guy left the game. Okay, he's back. Cool. I'm going to go with Conjurer's Pursuit. It's going to allow me to sustain my mana bar throughout the entire game. My Q ability is Plasma Shield. It's going to soak up damage for me. Essentially, it's a shield. It's it's not that hard to understand. Psionic Storm. My W ability does damage on the ground in a small circle. Uh, my E ability is Dimensional Shift. This will turn me invisible. I cannot receive heals, take damage, deal any damage. Uh, but I can still move, and it's basically your get-out-of-jail-free card on Tassadar. It allows you to escape some oncoming damage. And then my D ability, which is Oracle, allows me to see what's going on around me every now and then once I hit the D key. Uh, looks like we are losing this particular engagement. The friendly team, Uther, Zeratul, Thrall, Tassadar, Vala, the enemy team, Arthas, Sergeant Hammer, Brightwing, Falstad, Gazlo. Uh, the reason I didn't show you guys the draft process in this particular game is because they were, like, not talking, not selecting characters. They were AFK. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling kind of salty already this game, but I'm, I'm trying to put it behind me. I'm trying to put it behind me. Our, per, our priority as this game starts, is just going to be collecting as many of these Conjurer orbs, uh, these regen orbs, as humanly possible. We have a very aggressive Falstad down here in the bottom lane, aggressive positioning, and then when I'm, whoa, and then when I move in, he does a pretty decent amount of damage to me. Uh, I need this regen orb, and he knows that, so I'm gonna try to creep in here, grab that, and then we can use my E ability to get out. The Shrines are becoming active in the middle and top lanes. And the friendly team doesn't look like they're reacting to that very quick. Uh, Thrall actually recalling as they opened up. Not a, not too good of a sign. Falstaff flying in from the bottom lane is going to be present. Rise of the Shrine opens up. And it looks like the enemy team is quite simply just going to have control of the middle. Because I have not had any help here whatsoever taking it. But it does look like the friendly team is at least contesting top. Maybe they can get that. Maybe they can't. Uh, it's going to be hard to push a Gazlo off of this. We're going to lose a lot of health in the process. I was a little late on the shields there for the Thrall. Uh, I'm going to try to focus down the Gazlo turrets here. Grants a little bit of vision. Uh, it looks like we lost control of top shrine, but have gained control of middle shrine. I don't know why I'm being so salty right now. I'm sorry. I know it's out of character for me. I've, I've had a stressful week. A really, really, really stressful week. I'm, I'm All right. We're putting that all, all to the side now. I'm not a salty player. We're going to go in this with a clear mind. We're not going to be swayed by emotions. All right. Mental Acuity is the next talent that I pick up. Uh, this is, like, really good for countering Zeratul and Nova. Even though the enemy team doesn't have a Zeratul and Nova... Mental Acuity is still a phenomenal talent. Basically, every 15 seconds, you get vision of everything going on around you for 5 seconds. That makes it extremely hard for people to gank you in lane, because there's only a 10 second window that they could do that in. So essentially, throughout the course of this game, I'm going to be hitting the D key very often. We're going to be getting the vision around us. And then we're going to be proceeding on with life like everything's normal. Looks like top lane's having a little bit of trouble. The enemy team is one level ahead of us. That's unfortunate. Go ahead and get vision again. Uh, essentially, I can shield these guys. And then every every nine seconds or eight seconds, I can put another seismic storm uh, under or psionic storm uh, underneath one of these towers. But as far as actually like sustaining these mercenaries a lot, uh, not too much I can do there. Pretty much the damage that they've taken is going to stick with them. It's not like we're playing uh, Uther or something that can actually just heal these guys. 
Let's go ahead and pick up this regen orb. The reason I'm okay with this team having two supports is because the, the way I play Tassadar is a lot more like a ranged assassin than anything else. Looks like there's a very decisive push up in the top lane. Uh, I'm going to be making my way up there. They've already killed a fort, which has given them quite the level advantage. We are going to be picking up Static Charge, which is going to allow our auto attacks to right... Whoa! Which is going to allow our auto attacks to critically hit whenever we right-click someone that's been in the Psionic, psionic Storm uh, already. So essentially, if they walk in it at all, we get free critical hits. As you can see right there on Sergeant Hammer as we pushed her back. The enemy team did a great job of pushing, but it looks like we are in control of the bottom shrine. As long as we can hold this, we should be fine. Uh, I probably could have saved Uther there if I was actually looking. I was making sure we were okay bottom. I needed to, to see if I was going to have to go down there or not. Uh, at level 10, we will get a very powerful boost to our DPS, but we're not quite there yet. They are still pushing very aggressively. I'm just going to keep laying down these things right under their feet. And hoping for the best. Gonna have to use my dimensional shift to get back to safety as they push through another row of towers very aggressively. All right, we'll just clean this up, no problem. Clean it up, no problem. Ain't no thing. Looks like the enemy team has taken the bottom shrine, but we got most of the bombardments out of that. It's not like they got a ton. The enemy team two levels ahead of us, not a big deal. We could still come back from this. We could definitely come back from this. Thrall's holding top, getting XP there. So let's push middle. Try to get our XP here. Uther says, this is pathetic. Good. Good. Your transformation to the dark side is complete, Uther. All right, we'll go ahead and dimensional shift away from this. Pick up the Archon at level 10. Archon gives us a massive shield that we can use to survive punishment from the enemies. It also... Gives us a shit ton of auto attack potential. As you can see, as Thrall pushes my kill target away from me, uh, we were able to deal a ton of right-click damage to the Brightwing and to the Arthas there, and pretty much take them out of the fight right away. Uh, we now have numbers advantage. The friendly team wants to go for the boss. I, unfortunately, have to recall first. We do not have access to this Sippy Cup. We just saw Falstad pushing the bottom lane as well, but as far as the level gap goes, we are starting to close in a little bit. This fort looking like it will die which will give them a little bit of a level advantage. We did kill that golem very, very, very fast, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, they're holding strong on that one level level advantage that they have. Normally, I would have more stacks of this Conjurer's Pursuit than we do right now. I had a little bit of a shaky start. Can I apologize for the salty start to this video? I'm not a salty player. I'm not. That does not represent me at all. We're going to grant vision to the team with our... What is this even called? With our Oracle... Uh, basically allow them to make better decisions on what they want to do. We are going to be dealing this critical hit damage to the enemy Brightwing. Did decide to shield myself there, even though it wasn't necessary. Temples are active again, one top and one bottom. Uh, these are the last of the temples that are somewhat predictable. Looks like Gazlo is in our base with that Robo Goblin doing some work. Uh, so essentially we can go back to the base and defend that. Or we could try to get top. But Vala walking right by him. Seriously? What are you doing? He, he got the fort down to half. Didn't actually kill it. But the enemy team did manage to zone us all back with that. And they are getting both of these shrines right now. Both of these temples right now. I'm going to be picking up Distortion Beam. This is going to allow my auto attacks to slow targets. It makes us channel our auto attack, which is, like, really weird. But, uh... I mean, we're a little bit behind on territory right now. Basically, two two forts behind. We can come back from that. I'm not too convinced that this is a lost game just yet, even though my attitude at the beginning of the video may have said otherwise. Let's go ahead, Grant Vision. Pop the Archon. Hit Sergeant Hammer real hard. We did slow him down a little bit, and now channeling our slow on Brightwing, we're going to take her down as well and continue to hold this top shrine. Uh, the enemy team may be going for mercenary camps in the bottom lane right now. We don't really know. But we are going to take down their top fort. This leaves us one structure behind the enemy team. Uh, we don't know where their Gazlo is. He did pick up that robot thing. Oh, we found Gazlo. He's right here. We potentially could deal a lot of damage to the enemy team right now. Falstad getting caught in the Thrall Ultimate is going to be taken down. And now we can deal with this mercenary camp very quickly. Very, very, very quickly. 
Yeah, I don't really know how I feel about this channeling right click thing. It makes it kind of hard to micro your character. But we do have a very sizable push going on in the top lane right now. I can grant vision again. The enemy team getting bot mercenaries trying to split push with this. Uh, we do have Zeratul heading down to bot lane, so he should be able to clean those out just fine. Uh, but it looks like the friendly team is disengaging, so I am going to follow suit. Uh, it looks like Zeratul may fall over there. His health's pretty low. Thrall is trying to get the mercenary camp up in the top lane. We do not know where their Gazlo is. So uh, he actually may be in pursuit over there to help him out. Or to, to take that for his team. So I'm going to go help him out. Uh, we are going to get, uh, really at this level, second strike. Or, uh, I can't read it without my glasses. This one right here, the slow on our psionic storm, is going to be decent choices. Uh, I think I kind of want to lay two of these psionic storms down. We can use it twice in in succession. I don't think it's gonna do. I don't think it's gonna cost additional mana. It does not. So we can basically kill a minion wave in one go, even while they're moving, uh, with our psionic storms. And we can do that every eight seconds. So we can push up here. We're relatively safe. We'll take this lane down real quick, and then start to reposition going towards our team. Didn't land that as well as I wanted to. Squares. There we go. Shrine is spawning in the bottom lane. Let's make our way down there. We do have Archon ready to go for this fight. The other reason I like this Psionic Storm upgrade where you can lay two of them is it allows you to deal extra damage to, like, everyone with your Archon because the Archon does splash damage. Looks like our Zeratul in the middle of the map right now for some reason. Uh, let's go ahead and shield our Vala. All right, Archon coming out. I'm going to hit the closest target to me. That's Squishy, which is Brightwing. Psionic Storm's being dealt out. We are going to take down the enemy Lich King, trying to chase after Fostad. Now we're a little bit too slow, but I'll shield Vala so she can chase. And we get this just fine, pretty decisively, actually. Nice turnaround there. Very nice turnaround there. Uh, the more the, the other minions are starting to spawn here, but we should be able to right-click them down as well. Zeratul looking like he's split-pushing the middle lane. Okay, so we're pulling this back. We have a two-level advantage right now. This is going to deal a ton of damage to their bottom structures. It's probably going to get us another 800 XP. And the friendly team looking like they want to go for this boss. We are going to be able to kill that very quickly as well. So we do not have a traditional team comp uh, compared to the enemy team. We have two supports, and I'm building for, like, pure damage. Uh, we don't have a tank. Our healer is a fantastic initiator. I mean, Uther is a phenomenal initiator. But we definitely don't have a traditional team, and we're still making it work. If we go ahead and take a look at my stats, I'm 12-0, 48k siege damage, 13k hero, and then some other stats. Uh, my <laughs> Some other stats, those are good. Uh, my healing could definitely be better. I have not been using my shield to its full potential. Probably because of my state of mind going into this. Uh, but we could start to change that as we continue. Going to go ahead and shield Vala. We need to keep her alive here. She's our main damage dealer. I am going to... What was that ultimate? I guess it was directed at the... At the golem. Oh, we do manage to take down the Lich King very quickly. Uh, we are in the Sergeant Hammer range, though. So I think repositioning to another lane may be a good idea. I'm going to start to back out. I'm going to head... Uh, we want to take these mercenary camps. I'm totally fine with that. Now, uh, when you're stacking these psionic storms or whatever they're called, the damage does not stack. So if someone is standing in two of these circles, then you are not going to be dealing two circles worth of damage to them. But the way I started thinking about Tassadar changed over the course of me playing him because I have been putting uh, some decent time into him lately. Essentially, I was thinking of the character as, oh, he has a damage ability on his W. That's what I need to be doing damage with. That's not necessarily the case. Uh, he's going to be dealing a lot of damage with his right clicks. And the way you make his auto attacks better is by throwing down your W. Shield on Zeratul here. We're going to switch into Archon form, and we are going to take down Falstad, who is slowed every single time I right-click. We take down Brightwing as well. We are in a very, very strong position to head to the middle of the map. Uh, I'm actually going to head to the top of the map since uh, since we're kind of split up. Uh, we should be getting these for sure, though. Uh, let's go ahead. We are going to get the Twilight Archon. This is going to uh, basically increase our effectiveness of our Archon. 50% increased range and basic attacks deal. Or, uh, what is it? 
Initial shield amount increased by 50%, basic attacks deal 50% more damage, and we get a bonus to our attack range when we're in Archon form as well, which is very, very, very beneficial. Um, we need to put a storm here and here. Looks like we're going to be able to solo this just fine. Uh, these shields should sustain us decently well enough. If we get ganked, well, number one, we should see it coming with the Oracle. But if we get ganked, I should be able to jump out of here or, if they wait long enough, trade with the Archon. So, sign of storm there and there. Cool. This is going really well. I've been playing a lot more Tassadar since... Did I ever finish my thought earlier? I'm sorry. My brain is just everywhere today. Uh, the W is actually a catalyst to dealing more right-click damage. Once I realized that and started playing accordingly to that, like, to to that mental process, I started liking Tastar a lot more because essentially my problem was, oh, I put down my Q or my W and he moved out of it right away and it dealt no damage. Well, I feel useless. But since I picked up that static charge talent, I've been playing with that. It's gotten a lot better. All right, I'm going to let him kill the majority of this camp. There we go. Archon form coming out. I'm going to stand on the circle. I was polymorphed by the enemy team. I did do a dimensional shift. Uther was just a second too late on that ultimate, but it looks like they are going to kill the enemy team here. Uh, essentially, I died there because of that polymorph. I'm assuming Brightwing has the increased damage on the polymorph. Yes, she does. A good Brightwing is good. So essentially, this is the build. Conjurer's Pursuit, Mental Acuity, Static Charge, Archon, Distortion Beam, Second Strike, and Twilight Archon. Uh, this is what I've been using to pretty good effect with Tassadar lately. Now, some things you can change if you don't want to be slowing people is you can get their Perscience, I believe it's called, which automatically activates your Dimensional Shift at low health. And it doesn't use the cooldown of Dimensional Shift either. And then at the next level range, you would get Dimensional Warp, which allows your Dimensional, excuse me, your dimensional Shift to heal you as well. So you get a lot of sustain out of that. But I also think you lose a lot of kill potential, or at least in my experiences, I've lost a lot of kill potential when I've tried to go uh, for that particular combo. So I enjoy this one a little bit more. Uh, we also have a healer on our team with Uther, so I, I feel fine taking those talents. Gonna go ahead and look at the stats again. We have 20,000 hero damage, 74,000 siege. My healing is pathetic, but my XP contribution is pretty good. Uh, looks like Thrall is going to be... Oh, I was going to say dying up top, but he's doing a ton of damage to the enemy Brightwing, actually forcing her out there, and she may still die to minions if she's not careful. Now, we can land an auto attack here, which is going to slow Sergeant Hammer a little bit, but Sergeant Hammer's going to use her boosters to get out of there. Let's go ahead and go to the middle. Thrall should be able to hold this no problem with all the self-healing he has, and we can get this. Good, good uh, <laughs> movement there, Vala. Uh, Zeratul's pushing the bottom lane. Looks like this game's gonna be in the bag. We managed to turn it around. Uh, I usually have an issue with this map because it's really hard to turn games around, but the team came together and they did a really good job. Um, I, I, I'm glad that I at least attempted to make, like, an obvious change in my mentality because I went into this game it's with such a bad mood and I don't really know why. It just happens sometimes, I suppose. But there you go, Hero League with Tassadar. Uh, this is the build I've been using, as I said, because there's been a ton more Novas and a ton more Zera tools in matchmaking lately. And it's really, really, really strong against those two. I could have been a little bit more liberal with the applications of shields on teammates. I was not doing a lot of that. And, uh, you know, I could have played better in a lot of other aspects as well. But there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this video... I guess is actually the first one I'm recording on my new setup. So we have the gaming PC running at full capacity. Uh, the only thing it's doing right now is playing the game. And then the streaming PC, which is to my right, is getting the video feed from the gaming PC, recording that. And then the, the recording PC is also what I'm going to render on as well. So this should allow us to have some pretty damn high quality videos. Again, I, I don't know why I feel the need to apologize again, but I was in a bad mood when we started. And I don't really know why. It happens to the best of us, I suppose. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Tastar. I, I, I see myself continuing to play him. He's very, very good. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.